Good morning, modern steaders. So as you guys watched a few videos back, we had a bear on the homestead. We've also had some of our neighbors tell us that they've had bears on their property recently. So today, we need to make our beehives bear proof because we don't need to be losing our bees that we just got for the homestead. But first, we need to take care of all of our animal chores. Look at all that delicious vegetables growing. Look at them beets. I'm a jamming. Oh, I can't wait. I don't know if you can hear the turkeys or not. Let's go check on the meat birds and see how the bees are doing while we go over there. Ah, the bees still aren't active yet. Looks like they're napping. Oh, they're starting to come out of the hive now. Seeing a few of them here and there. They're loving all the clover we have over here. When you're out here moving the chickens around in the afternoon, you can just hear the bees buzzing. They love this fresh clover. Morning, guys. You guys are getting huge. Look at the turkeys, too. I don't know who enjoys the clover more, the chickens or the bees, but the chickens love eating that stuff. I think it's going to be another warm one. Yesterday it was only supposed to be in the upper 80s and what, it was almost 100 degrees. Olivia was so disgusted. That's not what it said. It's not supposed to be like that until tomorrow. I know, so I'm wondering how much warmer today will be than what they're calling for. They're calling for 96. That's not right. It's not right. The weather's wrong. She kept looking, looking at the temperature. No. Good morning, Willow. Are you in a better mood today? Huh? You in a better mood? Like a brain in there. So what happens is I've been sticking the grain in and then I'll fill it up with alfalfa because I run out of feed because she keeps wanting to eat. So the alfalfa comes out first. She doesn't like the alfalfa. Oh. So then she gets a two. I think. Come on and figure out. Have you seen any bears around lately? Huh? Come on in. Are you thirsty, Figaro? Or you just gotta taste all the goat's waters first? You checking it out, making sure it's drinkable for him? Ah. That cat's gotta get into everything. Everything belongs to him on the homestead. That's for sure. Come on in, sleepies. You want some alfalfa and sunflower seeds? Come on in, Hope. They seem very cautious about something. Come on, girls. You coming? Look at that, Willow. You're here just in time for a second breakfast. It's down there waiting for you. Oh my goodness! You want your mamas? What do you think of Figaro there, Ivy? I think Willow's weaning Nora. I don't think she's letting her drink too much anymore. Babies. They're waiting for you, Buttercup. They sure are.
that's a good stream coming in. Holy moly. I ain't had drinking. Good morning, pigs. You liking the shade you have over here right now? Come on. The grass is nice and wet over here for you. It's got a good dew on it. Here, right there. You don't like this grass, do you? It's not as tasty, huh? Because you're not out here rooting it up, whether we put the food out here or not. They're not eating this taller grass. I was hoping I could get them to eat this grass. It's some kind of native grass that grows here wildly. And none of the animals like it, but I thought maybe the pigs would be less picky. I was hoping they were gonna eat it, root it up, and then I could go back with my York rake, rake it behind them and reseed it, but it's not looking that way. We're gonna have to make their paddocks even smaller to get them to eat one area. Yesterday we planted our three sister garden over here. We have corn, pole beans, buttercup squash, corn, buttercup squash, a couple of pumpkins on that end, corn, pole beans, and then we got pumpkins. Then we planted sunflower seeds on the perimeters. That garden was tilled and now it's being fertilized by the like, pig's dung and some compost they made for us a few years ago. So we're really curious to see how this garden turns out. Figaro, now you're eating the pig's grain, huh? You're everywhere. You crazy cat. Come on in, little man. Look at that, a full jar of milk from Buttercup this morning. You good girl? Are you done eating? No. Finish up. I hear your baby's calling you. She's like, I want to eat pasture. You guys are going to have to follow me down to the green grass and then I'll let you drink. I think they're both under her. Where's the other brother, Buttercup? There he is. He was hiding down at the other hay feeder. <laughs> what are you doing, Nora? Hope, you just sneezed all over me. Yeah, you did. Open up this other paddock to let the boys eat some fresh grass. And they're loving the clover. Caleb, Caleb, we gotta go in the barn and then out this door. Come on, I'll come get you. Caleb, you gotta come this way. Come here. You gotta come this way, dude. Ready? The boys are out there waiting for you. Look, there you go. There they are. Look at that. Yup, I need to start training you to get you out on pasture and electric netting so we can get you out here. It's gonna be a steamy hot day today. So before it gets too hot, we need to get some work done in the greenhouse. Our potatoes are doing amazing. They're growing like crazy, so we're gonna hill these guys with some more soil and get them so we can get more potatoes out of them this year. But first, we need to remove our drip tape irrigation and then we'll put it back after. But they're just doing so good. We have to hill them. It's supposed to hill your potatoes when they get around eight inches tall. So some of the plants are right around eight inches and a lot of them are a lot taller, but we're gonna do it now. We don't have any extra soil in the bed to hill them. So let me bring it in some soil by the five gallon buckets. And filling it up.
garden's doing go so good in the greenhouse. This is our first time with this garden in the greenhouse. We live in northern New Hampshire. We're in growing zone four beets. We have a really short season. And this, our soil here is really rocky. So we knew in order to do a garden, we we're gonna have to do a lot of work. So we decided if we we're gonna put all the work in, we might as well do it in a greenhouse. And that's why we built the greenhouse this year. And man, I'm so glad we did. Everything is jamming that's right bad. now. Now I thought about hilling them up with straw, but we can't find any organic straw. And most straw is sprayed with Roundup, and we don't want that for our potatoes. So if you guys have any other better materials, and sandy loam just because it's heavy, <laughs> um, leave it in the comments down below. If we want something that's organic, and we don't have to worry about getting Roundup or anything in our garden. Good work out. Oh, and then we've had, I feel like, probably insect problems. So. It's funny how some of the different varieties are growing at different rates. The potato plants are looking so good. They're really green, deep green. And yeah. Nice looking. There's one variety right here that I noticed is getting ready to flower out. And that is the Elba's. Glad we got in here first before our next project. It's warming up quick in here. Can't get to put the drip tape back. Better not after all that work. Right. Thinking you're watering them, you're not. And then you're watering the pathway. Don't worry. I'm sure we would notice that something was in the way. Checking out your garden. I think they're doing good. Yeah. Oh yeah, this one has three screws. Mm -hmm. It's got It's like a jungle down here, I tell you. Look all sweaty. <laughs> Get pretty warm. Your hair. All right, we gotta go take care of the beehive next and get that beer proof so we don't lose the beehives to the beers. No. I've been hearing from a lot of neighbors that they've been seeing beers too in their yard, so. 
We don't want them coming back and losing a hive. We need to get solar power out to our greenhouse to run our little fan that's going to inflate our two greenhouse layers. So what I did is I got a solar system from PremierOneFencing.com. We got some fencing for our goats, but that's later on. And I got this big old solar panel. We're going to have a marine battery in here. And then we're going to use it to power our electric fencer for around the bees. And then we're also going to use it to get power to our greenhouse. That will be in another video. This is a 30 watt solar panel. Got our clips that go to our batteries and our screw package. Should get our brackets hooked up first. I ended up getting the IntelliShock 20 battery operated electric fence energizer. This one's supposed to do, this has 2.6 joules. That's a pretty strong fence energizer. I'm gonna have to mount that here. Let's see if we got the screws here. I'm gonna go find something. This one can be operated with a battery or by a plug-in. Boom. I got a little small screw, two big fender washers, and then a wing nut. I'm going to mount mine right here in the center hole. Bam. The other nice thing about this IntelliShock 20 Energizer, this will do a lot of fence. So when our blueberry bushes get bigger, if we finally need to put an electric fence around our blueberry bushes, we can use this to power the blueberry bushes, which is nice. This is gonna be central. We're gonna be able to do the greenhouse fan, be able to power the beehive off of this energizer, and then the blueberries if we need to. That's one of the reasons we kept everything near the greenhouse, so that way we could have one central location to run the solar from. I was just in the basement, getting all the supplies we need, and we have our chicken grain and our pig grain down there. We buy it by a ton at a time. And our meat birds have eaten the same amount of grain as our pigs have eaten so far. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. They've both eaten just about half of a ton of grain so far. It'll be interesting to see. We'll have to weigh and see and keep track of how much chicken we get on the grain this year, weight, and how much pig meat we get from the same amount right, of grain. Right, right. And then just do a comparison to see which one's more cost effective to raise. Well, if one was way more cost effective, would you pick one over the other? No. Well, I want more turkeys. Yes. And that's true. That includes the turkeys eating the same amount of grain too. So we'll have to include all the poultry when we weigh it. I'll have to keep the tallies. When we're all said and done, I want to have the solar panel and battery right here. But I don't have enough wire to go from there to there today, so it's something I'm gonna have to order. So we're just gonna stick it here and we'll set our fencing up. Oh, that's right, you wanna use it here. You're nice and active. This hive, it's active, but not as much. Definitely less bees in this hive. One done. Those turkeys are big. They probably ate a lot of that food. Oh, they do, I'm sure. Look at that. Two down. Two down. No rocks so far either. Don't say it. Now your next one. I know. It stinks having to put a fence around it, but I'd rather have honey than bears getting our bees. And pollinators for our flowers. Three 
down, no rocks. The bees are nice and chill, active, but calm. I haven't been nervous since I walk up over here. They're flying like crazy. You can stand back and watch them just And they're all over this clover. I wonder if you could see them flying with their dr your drone. I hate to mow this pasture because there's so many flowers for them right now. Yeah, you shouldn't. It's just going to get dried up anyway right now. Four? No rocks? Uh, no rocks. Has that ever happened to you? No. I'm using some T-post clips for our electric fence. Bam. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Between the turkeys, the chickens, and the bees, it's pretty noisy over here. Everything's buzzing. One, two, three, four, I love hearing the bees. Them bees sure are busy. We're using a pretty thick gauge wire so the bear just can't break through it. She's rugged. Hey bee. Pretty, pretty rugged stuff. Right, we're gonna put a gate handle here. So this way we can take down this top one when we're coming to work. So that way we don't gonna jump over this top wire. So So when is the when is the first time that we should get in there? We'll probably check them soon. We'll wait till they've been here for a week. So in a couple of days we'll go in, we'll check on them and see how they're doing. That should help run the greenhouse thing too, definitely. Yeah, it's a 30 watt panel, so it should have more than enough power to yeah. run the greenhouse, run this fence, and then if we need to put a fence around your blueberries, it'll be able to run it all three. So you can just go boom, boom, and boom. Why would I need to put a fence around my blueberries? From the bear? From the bears or the deers. Oh my goodness. You don't want them eating them. No. Is it heavy? Nope. We just want to make sure the bears don't get our honey. Yeah. Let's go positive. Negative. Our little compartment for the battery. This one can go right to the fence right here. Bam. And we'll plug this in right here. I think it's already on. Now you touch it. You ready to test it? Haha, <laughs> no, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I got a tester. We're hitting at 8,000 kilovolts. It's the highest it's gonna go. Oh yeah, the bear will surely feel that if he comes over here. So this will keep our bees safe and we shouldn't have any issues with the honey. Now I need to figure out if I need a charge controller. If you know, leave it in the comments down below because we're going to be powering that battery and then we're going to be hooking it up to the greenhouse fan. So I got to do some research on that. Did your goat get out? He did. 
So I think what we need to do is we need to put a board in between that post and the gate to the chickens. So Look that she at can't that. Get She's out. up on the rock wall. Yeah. Nora! I guess your name suits you well. Nora the Explorer, huh? They could use a weeding over here. What are you doing, girl? Huh? How are we going to catch you if you're going to jump over the fences? Over there. So long. What do you think you're doing? No. Can to go see Livy's. Yeah. Hey. Honey, I think you're over here. What do you even know? Yeah. All right, Laura. Stay in this time. Oh, we had to nail a board up so Nora wouldn't get out anymore. Or the babies. How many eggs do you think? Um, eleven. Eleven. I'm gonna say twelve. There's that darn Brody hen. One. Two, four, six, eight, nine. How many are you sitting on, honey? That's it, one, ten. I was one off. I think it was too hot for him yesterday. Now you kiddos are staying over here. Huh? Hi, buddy. We're just going to have some simple burgers on the grill tonight and I'm going to make some sweet potato french fries and I'm just going to cook them in the cast iron pot on the grill as well. I'm just going to put some salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of onion powder as well as some avocado oil for the oil. All right. Well, that electric energizer should keep the bears away. I wouldn't want to touch that. Man, you would feel that snap. If you guys want to see another fun video, I'm going to put a link to one right here of when we trapped a bear cub on the homestead. That was a few years, two, three years ago back now. We called up Fish and Game because we had a bear cub on the homestead and we never saw its mom. But I'll put a link to that right here. That was a fun video. I don't know about you, but the summer weather here has hit. It's been in the upper 90s the last couple of days. We normally don't get that kind of weather this early, but we are enjoying it. We can't wait to see what's going to be growing in the greenhouse because of all this warm warmth the last couple of days. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us. You are a huge blessing to us in our homestead, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.